So hi, hello and welcome, Mike Rob Hunter here and today I want to show you how cells can eat other cells. Well specifically I would like to show you how ciliates such as paramecium and vorticella among others of course uh, how they are able to hunt for bacteria. Now this here is a time-lapse video of uh, some ciliates uh, that are moving around in my mic on the microscope slide and they're looking around for food and those cells can be found in aquatic environments and they're known for their tiny hair like structures that help them move around and those little hair that you find on the surface of these cells these are called cilia and uh, they're not only for movement but of course also very important um, for catching food for them. Now both paramecium and vorticella they feed on bacteria to survive. They use their little cilia, their little hair on the surface to create a water current that brings bacteria and other small particles towards them. And especially vorticella is able to create a visible vortex uh, which is a circular movement of water and uh, this is of course also the reason why scientists uh, gave vorticella the name that it has because of the water vortex that it is able to create. Now once the bacteria are close enough uh, the ciliate uses a special part of the cell called the cytostome to gobble up the bacteria and to bring them inside. So the cytostome that is essentially the mouth of the cell and from there the bacteria are then digested and the ciliate gets the nutrients that it needs for growth and for energy. Now the bacteria are engulfed and then they are end up in a so-called a food vacuole inside the cell and uh, the cell the ciliate will then use enzymes to break down the food that it caught and the nutrients are then absorbed into the cell and any leftovers are expelled again over a so-called anal pore. Now one of the things that I, is really evident here is in this video is, is the enormous size difference between the bacteria and the ciliates. The ciliates are, are not only much larger but they're also significantly more complex than the bacteria. Now you are able to look into them and then you're able to see a variety of different structures, the so-called the cell organelles. Bacteria on the other hand, they are significantly simpler and despite these obvious differences between the different cell types, they are still basically cells. This means that they have DNA and also certain basic biochemical um, events are also quite similar. But why is the feeding so important for ciliates? Well, uh, this is of course how they get their energy from and also the nutrients. They need uh, those nutrients for growth uh, and for reproduction. Because after all, when a cell has grown sufficiently in size, it's then able to divide into two. But somewhere the cell material must come from and that is from the food that it's eaten. So basically all of the proteins, the DNA, all of those um, macromolecules are made from building blocks that come from the food that uh, the cell has eaten. Now these microorganisms play also very important uh, roles in our environment. For example, they keep the bacterial population in check by eating up the bacteria and they also play an, um, an important part in the breakdown and cleaning up of dead plant and animal material. So when they break down and digest and then respire the organic substances, they produce CO2 and this way carbon is again returned into nature. Now paramecia are oval shaped and can move around uh, using the cilia, but vorticella, they look quite different. They have this bell shaped structure and in many cases they are attached to a surface. There are of course some motile stages um, as well after they reproduce for example. However, they are able to retract and pull together quite quickly in case of danger. And of course, uh, you already probably know that sometimes or very often uh, those ciliates are also an important f uh, source for food for fish. And therefore, you might have some problems finding a lot of them in an aquarium because the fish, they like uh, to eat them up. And then one more last thing, ciliates can sense and move towards areas of higher oxygen concentration and this helps them to find the best environment for growth and for reproduction. Both ciliates and bacteria in this video here have now moved to the edge of the cover glass where there is most oxygen and this uh, is also the place where they meet and this is also the place where now the feeding frenzy takes place. You can see how the ciliate is swimming into the bacteria and how it's able to suck them in.
So here we have, here we've got it. Um, so that's uh, basically how ciliates, including paramecium, vorticella, and many others, how they feed on bacteria. We hope, uh, I hope that you liked the video and that it was informative uh, for you, and that you learned something new um, about these fascinating microorganisms. Thank you for watching. Here is the next video for you to watch. Happy microbe hunting as always, and uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.